So let's say you've got this piece of pipe right here. It's fresh off the metal cutting saw, jagged edges, burrs, everything. And you need to drill a hole in the side right here. Can you put it on your drill press table and just hold it in your bare hand while you drill it? Sure, you can do that. The only question is, do you have health insurance or will you be paying cash for your stitches? This is part two in my four-part series in how to use a drill press and how to get the most out of it. Today, we're going to be talking about work holding, which is how you affix the work somehow to your drill press or your drill press table so that the whole thing is rigid during drilling. Now, during my last video where I introduced the drill press, one of my viewers commented that it's important to be careful around a drill press because really they can be just as dangerous as a lathe. And that's something I hadn't really thought about, but it's absolutely true. This has a powerful motor, and it's spinning at a high rate of speed, so if you have loose clothes or long flowing hair, you can be pulled into the machine and get really severely hurt that way. A drill press also has the possibility of spinning whatever piece of work you're working on, especially if the drill bit bites in and grabs it. So for instance, if you're doing a piece of work like this hunk of pipe that I'm drilling here, and the drill bit suddenly grabs the work, it can spin it. And that's very dangerous if the work is big or heavy or has sharp edges. Now, if you take that same piece of work and tie it down to your drill press table in some secure way, then if the drill bit binds and grabs the work, it's going to stall the motor. And that's not good for the drill press, but it's much less dangerous for you. Not everything you do on the drill press needs work holding. So if you're doing large pieces of soft material and you're drilling small holes, it's completely fine to drill these by hand. I probably do about half my work on the drill press freehand because a lot of the time I'm taking pieces of wood and putting little holes in them with twist bits and that's just not dangerous and it doesn't have to be super precise, so work holding isn't necessary. For everything else I do, I do tie things down to the table some way and I've got a lot of different ways of getting that done. The obvious choice for work holding on the drill press is your basic C-clamp. These are invented for metal working and they go really well with a drill press, but they do have a couple of shortcomings. One thing is that if you use them like this, the handle and the screw are going to get in the way of the quill travel. So you have to use them upside down, which is no big deal, except that the underside of your drill press table has usually ribs cast into it for extra strength. And that does make the table more durable and flat, but it can make it really hard to find a flat spot that you can get your clamp into. Some people actually fill in the underside of the drill press table with wood or some other material so they have more flat spots. That sounds like a really good idea, but frankly, I'm too lazy to do it. If you're doing any small parts on the drill press, I highly recommend having one or two drill press vices. This is a really cheap import vise, and it's not even great quality. The, uh, the jaws aren't even parallel, but I've had it for seven or eight years and it works just fine, especially because it has low profile jaws that won't get in the way of the chuck when you're drilling your work. This is a great piece here. You can get it for 10 or $20 and I'll link to one in the description. For heavier or more complicated work, I recommend one of these heavy duty drill press vices. These aren't super easy to find new. I'll link to something similar in the description, but if you can find one of these used, they're not very expensive and they're super useful. They're much heavier than those light duty vices and they have nice attachment points for bolts on either side right here. This one is also a tilting vise, which comes in super handy. You undo a couple of bolts and the whole thing goes up, up to 90 degrees, and then back down again. Now I know the drill press table tilts, but this is much easier to tilt, and with this you have your work holding and your tilting combined at once, so it's quicker and you can leave your table at 90 degrees. The other feature of these vices that's really great is they tend to have V grooves in one of the jaws, and that allows you to hold round stock either vertically or horizontally and grip it really securely. So keep your eye out for something like this the next time you go to a flea market. They're really worth the 10 or 15 bucks you typically pay for them. If I have a larger piece that won't fit in a vise and isn't compatible with C-clamps, I actually use these woodworkers wood screw clamps. These are fantastic for the drill press and I don't see people using them very often. They have a couple of advantages over C-clamps. One thing is that you can hold small parts in them and then just hold the clamp freehand while you're doing drilling. I also use this trick sometimes on the bandsaw to keep my fingers away from the blade when I'm doing smaller pieces. 
These clamps have some other advantages at the drill press because they don't have to find a flat spot underneath the table. These flat jaws can grip the edge of the table and still do a really good job of holding things down. These clamps also do an excellent job of holding onto each other. So you can grab a piece of work in one of these clamps and then clamp this clamp down with another clamp and the whole thing can be very rigid and stable. Out of all the ways that I can hold work down in my drill press, my absolute favorite is this hold down. You might not have seen one of these before, and I don't see a ton of people using them on YouTube, but they're absolutely fantastic. It's based on the same basic principle as a vice grip. So you've got a threaded rod and a nut down here. You unscrew this, you drop the threaded section through one of the slots on your table. You set the depth and the tension that you want with this thumb screw, and then you clamp it down. And the compound mechanical action of the clamp does a great job of delivering a ton of force to whatever you're clamping. You might notice that all the clamping action is done with this tiny little metal pad here, and that wouldn't seem like enough, but this thing delivers so much force that this holds things down really effectively. I use it in particular anytime I'm drilling sheet metal and sometimes plastic, although I'll use a little pad under the foot when I'm doing that. It works for all of those things, and it's so useful that sometimes I leave this set up on my table for two or three weeks at a time if I'm doing small pieces. There are also a few things you can make yourself without spending any money that'll make holding work to the drill press a lot better and safer. An easy thing that you can make is this wooden V-block, and I just made this by running a couple of 45 degree cuts into a piece of 2x4. And this allows me to hold round objects like dowels or pieces of pipe securely and keep them from rolling on the drill press. Now, I still wouldn't try to drill this with only my hand holding it down, I would combine it with some clamps, but the V-block is a really important part of holding this sort of thing steady. Another thing you can do is modify one of these hand screw clamps to make it better for drilling the centers of dowels. If you just take a relatively large drill bit and drill straight through the jaws right in the middle, you'll have a nice set of openings that'll hold round stock very securely. You want the hole to be a little bit smaller than whatever you're holding, so if you're trying to drill a one inch dowel, drill a seven eighths hole. There's a lot of room in these jaws, so you can actually drill several different sizes, and the clamp is still probably going to be fine for woodworking. So after just drilling a few holes, you have an excellent jig for center drilling dowels and round stock, and it doesn't cost you any more than it costs to buy the clamp. When you're doing any kind of work on the drill press, the most important question you have to ask yourself is, what's going to happen if the drill press suddenly grabs the work and spins it? How dangerous is that going to be? And if the work moves or rolls and the precision of the holes is messed up in some way, is that going to ruin the project? If either of these things is a concern, then you should stop and figure out some sort of work holding for the drill press. When things are tied down safely, you'll get better work and you'll be much less likely to get hurt. Before I go, I need to thank all of my new patrons on Patreon. I've been incredibly lucky recently, and I have so many new patrons, I actually have to read them off of a pad of paper. So, my heartfelt thanks goes out to Lyra Nuna, Matthew Lee, Tyne Lassen, Andrew Burke, Richard Sandow, Rick Orozco, Isdoro Gutierrez, James Kilson, Guillaume St. Jo St. Charles, W.H., Elise Harrison, Tom Smith, and Chelsea Bordreau. And apologies for anybody whose name I butchered. I'm so grateful to have people supporting me on Patreon, especially because I recently went full-time into content creation and gave up furniture making and fabrication. It's a great choice for me, and I'm very happy with the new direction my business is taking, but I have to be honest, I'm really not making a living at YouTube yet. And the only way that I'm going to make a living is if Patreon keeps growing the way it has been. My patrons are making it possible for me to make these videos full-time, make more of them, and make them better. So, if you're interested in supporting this channel, go to patreon.com slash rexkruger, and you can check out the exclusive blog posts I have, early access to videos, patron rewards, and now exclusive videos, like I just did a tour of my entire shop and a discussion of all of my favorite tools, and that video is only available to my patrons. And I plan on having more videos like that in the future. So, if you've been thinking about it, please become a supporter of this channel. It's only through the support of my viewers that I'm going to be able to keep doing this work and bring you the content that you want. And even if you can't afford to support the channel, that's completely fine. I really appreciate having viewers. Thanks so much for watching.